Thank you for joining today. Welcome everybody to this uh, very important broadcast. Uh, as usual, as we add up the figures to 1,000 in 10 minutes, you can truly expect I come to you with the presentation. Uh, today's presentation is going to be uh, uh, verbatim. I have no uh, I will just present you the fact as I know them, and I hope that uh, it brings a lot of clarity to this uh, little confusion uh, on the subject of uh, SCBC. There is so much rumor and allegations out there. And my coming here today is in an attempt to strengthen the records and so that you, uh, the Ambazonian people, understand why we do the things we do or we have done the things we have done or we will do the things we want to do. And so please, uh, once we hit uh, the 1,000 people mark in 10 minutes, I will come to you with that uh, information. In the meantime, as you join, just go ahead and hit that share button. Get in everybody that would want to be here. Let them join the broadcast. Uh, hit your share button and let everybody that can join the broadcast, let them join the broadcast. I want to say hello to everyone watching from ground zero uh, through SCBC. We appreciate you. We thank you for your resilience. We are looking out for you. And especially those of you out there in Victoria who are victims of flood. Uh, today, we want you to know that the entire interim government is praying for you. And I think in about an hour after I leave, the acting president, Dr. Sarko, will be out to uh, pass special greetings uh, to all of you there in Victoria. So please, again, we sympathize with all of you out there in Victoria who are going through the flood. We hope that the damage is uh, limited, is minimal, and let us be Ambazonians. Let's help those that we can help. Victoria, help your neighbor, help your friends, help them out of this situation. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Please, uh, again, hit your share button as you jump. And uh, again, once we hit the 1,000 people mark, I will bring you this broadcast proper. The numbers are increasing in a little slow pace, uh, not what I expected. Uh, we have uh, a little over 300 people right now in five minutes. That is slow. That means some people are joining and they are not sharing yet. So please do all of us a favor. Hit that share button. Share it on your WhatsApp groups. Some of them are. Some of them don't know that I am actually. Up. I was supposed to be here yesterday, for some reasons I couldn't make it, and some were not expecting me to be here uh, today. So please, may you remind them by hitting the share button. Let them get the broadcast. Let them know that I am live. And what I'm going to do after I finish uh, presenting the story, as I would want you to know. I will open your phone line and uh, allow you to call in and ask any question that you can on the subject of SCBC. I don't want to leave here with any doubt in anybody's mind uh, about what we are trying to do or about what we have done and about the relationship between the interim government and uh, SCBC. So again, after I finish the presentation, I will open the phone and take a few, uh, a few uh, phone calls, a, a few questions, and I will limit every question to one minute. Again, I will limit every question to one minute. If you try going beyond one minute to ask your question, I will end the call. I want to be able to take as many questions as possible. 
So when you get on the line, make get to the point, ask the question, don't do commentary. I'm the only one who do commentary. And so please, uh, when you ask a question, do just that. Uh, again, we are just close to 400 people in seven minutes. That is really, really, really slow. Some of you are not hitting the share button. So please go ahead, hit the share button. Let me know also uh, where you're calling in from. Let me know where you where you where, let me know where you are tuning in from. Uh, especially if you are tuning in from Ground Zero. Let me know, please. I see BT Igwe from Berlin. Thank you for joining, sir. Emmanuel Agota Oben. Jonathan Tingum, I see you guys joining. Vincent Thomasang also uh, just joined. Please, 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 the numbers, let's get the numbers up. Let's get the numbers up. Over 400 people right now, going to 450. Let's get the numbers up so I can get straight away into the presentation. Uh, we're eight minutes into this. We haven't hit five, 500 yet. That is no good. Please do your part. Hit the share button. I see Seacott uh, Judson say hi, senior comrade Chris. Thank you, Seacott. I also see Nankwe Asabi Oscar from Oshodi. Wow, that is interesting. I lived in uh, Lagos and uh, Oshodi was, was one of the impossible uh, 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 roads in Lagos. Good to know you're calling, you're joining from Oshodi. See Mary Baba, say hi, Chris. VV Blue, God bless you, Secretary Chris. Thank you, man. TT Juliet, I see you. A Nimbo Anjoku, watching from Los Angeles, California. I also see Marisha uh, Andusa, she says, I'm watching. I see Aqui Amberlane. I see Christy 80, say hello, Mr. Chris. Thank you. I see Christoph Messner, I think coming in from Germany. I free Nesto. I see you too. We have just hit 500 people in nine minutes. That is again really, really, really slow. We have to hit 1,000 before I start bringing you this presentation. So, please, if you are just joining in, do as others have done by hitting the share button, send it to every WhatsApp group that you belong to. Send it to every Facebook group that you know, and send it to, to all the Twitter groups that you can tell. This is an important uh, presentation that I bring to you. I see Ababa Edwin, that is my fan. I know that I always see him. Somewhere in for John, Bobby Lawrence watching from Luxembourg. I also see Indip Fredo join. I see Joe Brown say he's watching. Lorenzo De Monte from Berlin. I see uh, Shaila Misuku. It's a little bit difficult name there. Taku Emilia Dito. I see you. I see uh, Joya Alfute. Paul Asandak is watching. Julius Ortiz. Teddy in Kem Kelf Kelf. Emmanuel Lee. Divine Tenjo. No, he's not a GCE. Somebody is asking whether I'm reading the GCE. No, not the GCE. Uh, I, again, please hit that share button. And while you are doing that, I just want to make this very important uh, correction or announcement. There are allegations out there that uh, La Republic du Cameroon troops surrounded the Red Dragons in Libyalem and uh, killed, uh, I think they said, uh, 147 uh, of the Red Dragons in Libyalem. Uh, I just want you to know that this story is not true. There are fabrications of some La Republic du Cameroon agents who want people to develop high blood. Again, please note, those allegations are not true. The story is going around social media that 147 red dragons were rounded up and killed by forces, terrorist forces, belonging to La Republic du Cameroon. That, again, is false. It is fake news. In fact, uh, as, as of Wednesday, the Red Dragons, we are told, lost only one person, three injured in the confrontation they had 
with troops from the Republic of Cameroon. But that was since Wednesday. Since Wednesday. Nobody in Libya entirely has been killed except again for one person. Now, this one person is not the same person as a member of the Dragons who, uh, who died in battle. This one person was shot as he came out of his house uh, to pick something outside. He was shot and killed. I think that was uh, either Saturday or Sunday. Uh, that is all that is coming out of the BLM. The story going around, making rounds in the social media that uh, 147 red dragons uh, have been rounded up and killed in the BLM again is not true. The story is a fabrication of La Republic du Cameroon. I hope everybody get. Uh, I hope everybody gets this. And then I also want to uh, uh, mention the fact that a lot of things are happening on Ground Zero uh, at this moment. I think we are almost at the pinnacle of this conflict. And La Republic is trying to do everything to discredit the struggle and to infiltrate the struggle. Agents of La Republic, like a Paul Atanganji, Ekema Patrick, and the one so-called uh, 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 Njume, uh, Njume Valentine, yes, Njume Valentine, and people of the sort, they are trying and doing all that they can to infiltrate this struggle, resurrecting so-called Northwest-Southwest divide. I want to appeal to every Ambazonian. This struggle has gone beyond Northwest-Southwest divide. No, it will never show up. Now, remember the reason for which they describe us as two cubes of sugar that will melt very very soon the two cubes of sugar in their interpretation one was the northwest and the other was the southwest and when they said the two cubes of sugar that were going to uh, uh, dissolve they essentially meant that they will come in with their divide and rule tactic and before you know we are divided the northwest is divided from the southwest they were trying to play a game unfortunately so far almost two years running that ploy that game has not worked and i can assure every lot of people to come around agent out there i know you are watching and listening to me right now that ploy is dead its obituary was announced on october 1st 2017 we will not reduce ourselves to be known or described as Northwest and Southwest. In fact, I want to make a special appeal to every Ambazonian listening to the sound of my voice. From today, can we do this? Let's do this from this day forward. Let's avoid using that word, those, two, those two words or those two names, Northwest and Southwest. We are more than that. We are from Lebialem. We are from Batibo. We are from Bali. Or we are from Mezam. Or we are from Fako. Or we are from Manfe, uh, Manu. We are from India. We are not just reduced to some two cardinal points, Northwest and Southwest. We should stop using those two names. I am a proud Lebialem song. I don't want to be described as coming from the Southwest. That is nonsense. It's a colonial plot that was meant to divide and rule us. And I'm asking you, let's adopt the names of our counties and begin to use those names going forward from this day. We should not allow agents of La Republic of Cameroon to pull us apart. We have a common history a common heritage, a common culture, a common language. We should not allow ourselves to be defined from, some, from two cardinal points. That should not happen. So from this day, 
I'm asking every Ambazonian in there, identify yourself. Northwest, not us from the Southwest. Begin to identify yourself from Momo, from Mezam, from Meme, from Indian, from Farco, from Lebialem. That is who we are. And I hope we can drive home this message from this day to get to send a message to La Republic, to French Cameroon that, listen, uh, those appellations we end with you. We no longer accept them. We accept our community names. Thank you very much. Please, let's take this message to every Ambazonia. Now, besides that, again, they are, sell they are sending agents, their agents to infiltrate our boys, to infiltrate our families, to inf infiltrate our towns and our villages and our cities. The goal is to set confusion so that we begin to wonder who is fighting for us. I want you to know, restoration forces have no mandate. Restoration forces have no mandate out there to attack any one of us, to arrest any one of us, unless it is clear that those that they are arresting are agents within us, enemies within us. They have that authority to do that. They will also have authority to arrest or pick up anybody who is doing anything that is not endorsable by the ASC and of course in an extension, the interim government. But we should watch out that there are people in your neighborhood they will come to you pretending they are Ambazonians. They will come to you pretending, I mean, you will even find a flag in their hands. You will also see them probably trying to learn or to sing the anthem. Please, not everybody out there, especially at this time, even Mayor Akema, he can sing the, the, the national anthem. He can also carry the flag if he will end up having some people ending in their graves. So please, what I'm saying is this. It's not everyone out there carrying amber flag. It's not everyone out there singing the anthem that is one of us, who that is identifiable with this cause. So please, I am speaking to you on ground zero. Your security depends so much on what you yourself, you are able to do to protect yourself. Be vigilant, be vigilant. All these attacks, all these attacks that we are seeing popping up from every corner, these are agents of La Republic du Cameroon trying to infiltrate this revolution. We do not, we do not want anyone to die unnecessarily. And let me also say this. You receive any phone call asking for a ransom, refuse to pay. Record the phone number and call the interim government. I'm sorry, I don't have that number here, but uh, you can come to the Facebook page. You can come to my Facebook page, drop me a number, any phone number that calls you demanding a ransom, threatening a ransom. Those are not, again, those are not calls coming from restoration forces. Restoration forces are not out there to collect taxes or levies. Anyone collecting a levy or a form of tax from you is doing so by his own orders, not by the orders of the ASC or the interim government. Again, these are people, characters, we want to fish out. So please be vigilant. Now, one thing that La Republic of Cameroon is also trying to do, La Republic is trying to use the drones that were given them to fight Boko Haram, to attack civilians, to track and kill civilians in Ambazonia. Again, watch out for all of this. There are agents of La Republic amongst you. They are also trying to employ drones to track you. And we have also learned that Chadian troops and troops from uh, 
the Central African region, they are now also in Cameroon. I had that information this morning. La Republic is desperate, and they will do anything. They will shoot anything, especially in situations like ghost towns. Uh, uh, they, will, they will shoot anybody in situations of ghost towns where they find people moving. So please, if they say don't go out, stay indoors. When they say do not go out, stay indoors, stay in your house, and do not disobey the orders. And I also want to make, very, make this very, very clear. The interim government has not changed the schedule of the ghost towns. Ghost towns remain on, on Mondays. Mondays remain the only days or the only schedule for ghost towns. And if need be, for us to add one more day, two more days, we will duly make a public announcement in that regard. But until then, ghost towns remain only for Monday. Thank you very, very much. We have now hit uh, uh, 1,100 people, I mean, uh, uh, 1,200 people right now. And uh, I think I should get into uh, the, uh, the subject of the day. And again, I am speaking about the issues that you have heard out there concerning the S uh, SCBC, the Southern Cameroon Broadcasting Corporation Television. And uh, this, is the, what I'm, this is what I plan to do. I will do the presentation, and you are Ambazonians. This interim government is responsible to you. Yesterday, when I didn't come out to do this presentation, I thought maybe I should get gather every social media activist to come online and post any question about this SCBC issue so that I can candidly answer those questions to your uh, witness. However, I thought, uh, had a second thought about that, I thought, I think Ambazonian people should ask those questions. You should be the one to ask those questions because you own SCBC. Uh, the IG is just the custodian, the overseer that you have chosen to manage and take care of SCBC on your behalf. So that is why I am coming to you today. I have no, no notes here. I will just give you the facts as we know it, as we have seen it, as we have experimented. And after that, I will then ask you, give you a phone number to call in uh, with any question that you may have. Again, take note, when you call in, go straight to your question, ask the question and don't uh, make a commentary so that we can give as many people as possible the opportunity to ask a question too. So uh, this is it. Uh, Ambazonians, I, I'd like you to know that the question of SCBC is not about SCBC. A little over a week ago, a very important meeting took place in South Africa by a group that is out there that you all are aware of. In discussion at that meeting, I mean, three things were discussed, maybe with others too, were discussed at that meeting in South Africa. Number one, the ownership or the takeover of SCBC as we know it by that organization. Number two, a threat to impeach uh, the acting president, Dr. Samuel Sarko, from the interim government by members of that organization how they plan on doing that, I have no idea, but that was discussed. And then number three, that group in South Africa is now, as I speak, setting up an army on ground zero. And the goal of that army is not, again, listen to me, is not to combat La Republic du Cameroon. The group, the, 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 the goal of that army is to sabotage and destabilize what restoration forces are already doing 
on the ground. Now, why do I bring this, you may ask? I bring this to say this, that the question about SCBC is just a tip of the iceberg in the bigger picture that is out there to see that the IG does not exist, to see that the IG crumbles. The, the SCBC thing is only a little part of it. And you can understand that when we hold a meeting, a cabinet meeting, and somebody from South Africa hacks into the meeting and record my discussion with, 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 the, with department members, put it out there, and then rushes out with a video to condemn, to claim self-righteousness. No, it is a ploy. That is so big, it's a, it's a gigantic plot. And SCBC is only one of those plots. The end of the plot is entirely, I mean, is to bring down the IG at the end of the day. I wanted to lay this out. It's a background that we should understand. So as I go ahead with this presentation, let's have this in the background. Now, let me say this. As CBC, the initiative came out of South Africa by Ambazonians. The initiative we taught, or we have always taught, was meant to be a sacrifice, like everyone else is sacrificing in this struggle. In this revolution, many people are sacrificing in many diverse ways. Sometimes I do not go to bed to maybe 3, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And some of you surely too don't go to bed to maybe 2 or 12 midnight just sacrificing for this revolution. Some of you may be going to bed earlier than others, but you are also sacrificing in revolution one way or the other. Maybe through your generous giving, it is all sacrifice. Some people have also sacrificed in this struggle by laying their lives on the front lines. And as we speak, they are sleeping under the, uh, under the trees, in the bush, and under the rain. It is called sacrifice. And some have already died. Some have already died sacrificing for this revolution, for this cause. It is very important that we know this. We are all sacrificing one way or the other for this revolution. And so, the initiative of SCBC was that of a few Southern Cameroonians and Bazonians whom we thought were sacrificing. Maybe they had an idea that they thought could uh, push the revolution. And they it came up with the idea of SCBC. And the IG, where I will start from Skarkov, Skarkov paid the bills until a certain point. The governing council paid the bills until when the transition from governing council to the interim government came up. When the transition from the governing council to the interim government was made, at the Fort Conclave in Nigeria. The Fort Conclave set up a board of directors made up of representatives from across the globe of country, uh, uh, representatives of different countries ac across the globe that uh, uh, represent Amazonians. The mission of that board, now this is very important, the mission of that board, the mission of that board was to manage SCBC to see that SCBC could stand on its feet financially. Now again, take note of that. The mission of that board was to manage SCBC, not to own SCBC. That was the arrangement out of the Fort Conclave. Now, after the Fort Conclave, the interim government came in place. 
the interim government on I mean uh, the interim government placed SCBC under the supervision of the communication department because SCBC being a broadcast station or a communication station of course should naturally be under uh, the Department of Communications. And so the Department of Communications was, I mean, had the overseer status on behalf of the interim government over SCBC and, of course, the board. Now, I like, again, to make this, this, this distinction very, very clearly. The board was made, was formed from the fourth conclave not to own uh, SCBC, but it was formed to manage SCBC and report to the government. However, the reverse seems to be true, and that is a point of contention that we are having today with the SCBC. There are a number of issues we are having. Number one, there are questions that have not been answered right now as I come to you, as I speak to you. Number one, who own SCBC? That question has not been rightly answered. We thought all along, in fact, I have come public, gone public, making the defense that the interim government uh, or the people of Ambazonia through the interim government owns SCBC. I made that defense some time ago when somebody raised a question that SCBC was not owned by the people or by the government. And I came out and I made that defense. However, however, as I come to you today, we don't know. The IG doesn't know who owns SCBC, which is something that we are still trying to establish. The second point is, the second point is, who should have editorial control over SCBC? Is it the board and the management of SCBC or the owners? of SCBC. These are things we have not yet resolved. Thirdly, if SCBC was owned by the people through the interim government, should some people who are running or managing SCBC be allocated with a certain percentage of shares just because they are volunteering their services? Like every one of us is volunteering. These are three contentious issues, problems that are plaguing SCBC right now vis-a-vis -vis, uh, this interim government. And let me say this. I said that the fourth conclave gave SCBC, SCBC board, created the SCBC board. The SCBC board was supposed to manage uh, SCBC to the level where SCBC can stand on its feet financially. When yours truly uh, became the supervising authority on behalf of the people uh, at SCBC and the board, we had a number of meetings in which we discussed various ways by which uh, marketing could be done to bring in funds to run the uh, operations of SCBC smoothly, stress-free financially. Uh, however, you will also remember uh, at the beginning or around three months ago or so, the acting president had come out and said he has plans on privatizing SCBC so that perhaps it could run more efficiently. However, the president and the entire uh, uh, executive branch of government had a different opinion and had an about turn from that position. Arguments were raised. How can Ambazonia people believe us or trust us when we are fighting an animal that is still in the bush and we begin to say parts of it? We thought Ambazonian people would not take this lightly if should they hear that we are trying to sell part of SCBC. And so on three different occasions discussing this subject, cabinet resolved 
or let me, let me use the word cabinet voted after discussion, after debate, heated debate on three different occasions. The third occasion, the chairman of the board of directors of SCBC was brought on board to present uh, the cabinet with a picture of what he thinks selling of shares or privatizing SCBC uh, means to them. And so after listening to the chairman of the board, uh, the cabinet still went forward to vote overwhelmingly for the third time against privatizing or selling shares of SCBC. I will bring you the reasons why. And the Restoration Council, which is like our National Assembly, has listened to this case. Country coordinators have listened to this case. I have testified in their hearings. I have testified at the Restoration Council. And so with the board chairman, he has testified with country coordinators. He has testified at the Restoration Council. And I want to tell you, assure you, Ambazonian, that the overwhelming opinion has been we cannot. SCBC cannot be traded, cannot be sold in a form, not in the middle of a revolution. And these are the reasons why SCBC should not be sold. Number one, we have not again been able to establish who truly owns SCBC. You must have watched the video footage out there stating that the contract of S was sent uh, to me and to the acting president. That is not true. This is what happened. When I came on board, uh, when I came on board, after all the uh, allegations of misappropriation and embezzlement during the time of the governing council, Sisiko, when he uh, formed the government, decided to go for some financial transparency and accountability in this interim government. And Sisiko said, for any bill to be paid or honored by the treasury, the head of department must endorse or sign that bill and then forward it to uh, the treasurer before it can be paid. It was a means by which Every bid that is honored or paid in the interim government is accounted for so that not every Tom and Dick can break, take an invoice up to the treasury to be honored. And so Sisiko laid this down. So when I became the overseer on behalf of you and on behalf of the interim government uh, of our SCBC, the first thing, the first month, the bills of SCBC came to me for endorsement for payment. I forwarded, I forwarded, I forwarded, I forwarded it to the treasurer. The treasurer said, Secretary Chris, uh, I cannot honor this B unless we see or he sees the original invoice. And I said to him, okay, let's see what we're gonna do. I went back to SCBC management and said, listen, we will need the original invoice. It was kind of running late. And there were possibilities that they could disrupt service if uh, that bill wasn't paid on time. I had a discussion with the treasurer and we agreed that the bill should be paid. But the next time, next month, we would need to see uh, that original invoice. And so next month, we did not find the original invoice. The original invoice did not come to us. And I said to the management, there is no way the treasurer, the treasurer would pay this bill without seeing the original invoice. And the response that I got after a heated argument or debate was, uh, we would prefer the channel to be shut down than to bring you or give you the original invoice. And so they sat on it and as they said it, they did not release it and the TV was shut down. Not because the IG did not have money to pay, or not because the IG refused to pay, 
but because ma the management would not release the original invoice to the government. Now, let me ask you, which of you, who of you pays bills in your house without seeing an original invoice? Do you pay your phone bill? Do you pay your electric bill without seeing the original invoice? Of course, absolutely not. And so it was a problem, there was a problem of secrecy. We were told that the documents surrounding SCBC were classified by CCC but then he wasn't here. And if we had to do anything, we had to see those original bills. Now, of course, this is not very important. I, I brought this to explain this point that after that problem was resolved, the acting president and a number of us, including the, the, the board chair of uh, uh, SCBC, we sat down to resolve that problem. We said, okay, every month we want to see uh, the original invoice go to the president so that then we can honor the bills. So I'm saying it to say what the president has, has seen and what I have seen is only the original invoice. None of us is aware of what the original contract is cabinet has put out a letter asking the board to deliver the original contract as i speak to you there is no indication that we have received that and so there's there is some sick something that is hidden here that nobody out there wants somebody to know and so when we thought of privatizing scbc how can you even privatize something you don't have a handle over you don't know whether you own it that has been problem number one again as of today we don't have proof that the ig owns it now but to further uh uh give the impression that the ig does not own it after the cabinet wrote to the board explaining its position for SCBC to remember person owned by the people of Amazonia. Because the IG has not said we cannot pay the bees. No, it hasn't said that. The IG has not said we don't have enough money to pay the bees. No, it hasn't said that. And so when the IG sent a letter to the board chair, to the board and said, listen, we would prefer SCBC to remain 100% owned by Amazonians and not sell it. The board sent out a three-page letter basically stating that the IG cannot claim SCBC 100% because some other people to own it and those people must be rewarded. It was like an eye-opener to everybody. So we have thought all along SCBC is owned by the people of Ambazonia delegating authority to the IAG to manage it. So once we, re we receive that letter, we thought, well, uh, things are only getting complicated. We need to know who owns this uh, corporation. Now, number two, control over editorial policy. If the IAG the people of Amazonia owns SCBC. The IG that represents the people of Amazonia should have a full handle, not in a dictatorial manner, but at least, at least to control what goes on the air, what is said over the air. The IG representing the people of Amazonia should have full control to uh, determine what what the editorial, editorial policy is. So far, the IG has not been able to do this. I am sure that many of you watching and listening to me right now, you have seen recently that characters that a few months ago would not be allowed on SCBC now come over SCBC. They come over SCBC to curse the AP, 
you're acting president. They come over SCBC to curse the interim government. They come over SCBC, some have come over SCBC to say, listen, you don't have to pay my trip money to, you, you don't have to pay uh, my trip to Boya uh, deals to the IG. That's exactly what some have used SCBC to do. Now, you will expect that SCBC management, SCBC board, would stand up to these producers and say, this is not allowed. You cannot use a television that has been paid for by the government to ridicule the government, to set up division in this revolution. No, the board, nor the management, has not as much as stood up to this uh, sabotage and blackmail that is being broadcast over SCBC. And so, the IG has said, we want to, number one, determine the ownership of the SCBC. And if you, the board and management says, SCBC, I mean, people of Ambazonia through the IG owns SCBC, then uh, IG should be able to determine the editorial policy of the SCBC. This is also another point of contention that has been lingering over the air. Now, thirdly, the board, the board came up with uh, the marketing plan for the shares or for, uh, for selling the shares of SCBC. In their plan, they have 51% of the shares allocated to the IG. Uh, in, in, in the form of saying IG, you own it. It is your own. So you have a greater portion of the shares. However, however, uh, out of 49% of the shares remaining, 13% of those shares would be given to some people, we are told, they are part owners of SCBC. And when the IG asks, wh why do some people have to get or be allocated shares? The board stated that, uh, the board stated that these people uh, uh, invented or they own, they put in so much sacrifice over SCBC. And we are wondering, why would some people who are sacrificing like you out there have to be given some shares if, if, if the thing was going to be sold? If, some people, if we are beginning to reward or compensate some people right now by allocating some shares to them, who is going to compensate those who have died? Who, how are we going to compensate those boys who are putting their lives on the line out there on ground zero? The IG thought the moment will come when we can trade shares for SCBC. When the war is won and we get on ground zero, we can say it 100%, not a big deal. But SCBC remain the only voice that this interim government and you, the people, have to channel our messages to ground zero. When you sell SCBC, you are basically saying to those who are buying those shares, they too have an opinion on how uh, it is wrong and the editorial policy that is managed there. And if as business people they cannot make money, they will pull out those shares or uh, try to change the editorial policy. And when they change the editorial policy, you can imagine we are already seeing that the editorial policy is changing subtly and people are spewing hatred and division over SCBC for which you pay the bills. Everybody, I have heard the call of everybody talking about unity, unity. Unity everywhere, collaboration everywhere. If we have a TV station that cannot preach unity, that cannot preach uh, a collaboration, 
but bring in people who will sit on a television and spew hatred and division. Then what kind of unity or collaboration are we preaching? This is the reason why the interim government has said it is not time yet to trade off, to sell a CBC. Now, lest we forget this, we have examples of SCBC in London, in the BBC. The BBC is managed by an independent board, but the British, but, but the British government still owns it and have the overall say, the final say over the BBC. It's the same thing in America with the VOA and with public radio. It is owned by the people through the government. The government still have the overall say over what happens to those public uh, enterprises. And that is exactly the point that we are making in, uh, that, that the point we are making against privatizing or selling SCBC. So, three things we don't want we do not want shares given to some people only because they have sacrificed so much in SCBC. Number two, we don't have, we don't know, there is no proof, we have not seen the proof that, SC, that this IG owns SCBC. Number three, there is, I mean, SCBC operations are shrouded in secrecy. Now, you will realize at no particular point in time has the IG not paid the bills of SCBC. SCBC has always operated in some form of secrecy. Now, secrecy. Now, you guys will uh, remember that uh, SCAPAC had issues with SCBC over the same issues of their unwillingness to release original invoices to SCAPAC. Again, if you pay bills in your house, you want to see those invoices. So this number of things is making the IG to say, listen, privatizing SCBC now is not the right thing because we cannot privatize or sell what we don't know that we own because we have not seen the contract. Nobody at the IG except maybe the board, but they haven't released it to us up to today, despite the request for it. It has not been seen. So the IG position is, this is, I mean, SCBC is a mouthpiece, is the mouthpiece of this interim government. And let's not be mistaken. The, God, the IG is not saying, let's tearful debate. Let's not get some other board or come on the air. That is not the case. The IG is saying, let's keep it and, may, and keep constructive debate. You can come on SCBC and many people have and disagree with the IG, but they have also suggested constructive positions that can also help the IG. That is the kind of television that we need at this moment to serve the unity in the collaborative element of this revolution. And so in the absence, in the absence of a proof that the people of Ambazonia, represented by the IG, owns SCBC, the IG has said, if we cannot find that proof, we will not have to, live, we will not have to continue to pay the bills because you don't pay the bees for something you don't own. You pay the bees for what you own. So if we cannot see proof at this moment that the IG owns SCBC, the IG will not continue to foot the bills. This is where we are. A few days ago, uh, the country heads met with, uh, with the chairman of the board and yours truly, and also uh, the ROC executive, little executive met to figure out these things, and it also dwelled down, everything still dwelled down to, can we see the contract? 
And again, that was about two days ago. And as of I come to you now, we still haven't seen that contract. Now, let me explain to you what why we are talking about ABC. It is not a coup d'etat. The only coup d'etat that is being plotted against your interim government is coming from those who are doing everything in a little corner in South Africa to see that the IG crumbles, the IG falls. They are, they are sending troops to Cameroon, a little group in South Africa that all of us know they are now putting together troops to go on the ground and sabotage what the restoration forces are doing. And if I may ask, is this the kind of unity that we're talking about? Then we also have this, also, this group sitting in a meeting a week ago saying they're going to impeach the acting president. And it is the same group that is saying, do not give the IG any papers belonging to the SCBC. So it is essentially a coup d'etat. It is a takeover, not just of SCBC, but the IG that is in place. And ladies and gentlemen, let me also tell you this. This is not coming up today. It didn't start today. It started from January 5th. 2018, when our president, Sisiko Julius Ayoktabe, uh, was picked up with orders in, uh, in Nigeria. This, that is where this present crisis started. There was always a plot by somebody that we know who feels that the success of this revolution lies in his palms, began to plot to take over the IG. Unfortunately, this same person was involved, in fact, he's a key suspect in the abductions in uh, Nere Hotel in Nigeria. He was invited to testify at a hearing that was called. He said he cannot show up at the hearings because he doesn't want to release uh, some secrets. And for that, he would not testify. After that, he came up with this scoop. And the idea of scoop, originally they said, was to complement what, I mean, supplement what the IG is doing. It sounded good, and we all saw the publicity. But that movement, that little group in that little place, has now transformed to a group that is now building an army on ground zero. And the objective of that army is not to do what our restoration forces are doing, the objective of that army is to do exactly what Atanganji Paul's group on Ground Zero is doing. I have intelligence on that. I have information on that. I will not release it here. Our intelligence department will work on that. But that is the, big, the bigger picture here. There is a constituted ploy by this team to pull down the IG. And they know that should they hang on to SCBC and take it away from the IG and control what goes over SCBC. They will take away the public support, the popular support that SCBC has on ground zero. And they will change the language. And so the board of SCBC said to me, the guys own SCBC have said if they do not get their 13%, their 13% of the shares, they will walk away from SCBC. That's what they said, that they will walk away. In, in other words, essentially holding all of us Ambazonians hostage. That's what he said. And so, after hearing that, we talked. 
What if they walk away? If they walk away, then we are left with nothing. We have to be, we have to think wisely. That is when we begin to think if, what, should, what if they just abandon this thing and walk away? We will need an alternative. And we started looking for alternatives. And that is why you heard of A, B, C. Now, A, B, C will definitely come up. I can assure you that. However, provided they will not prove that you, the people of Ambazonia, own SCBC. If they cannot prove, if they cannot provide that proof, the AIG will not continue to pay what for, uh, they will not continue to pay for what they don't own. It's that simple. That's what the case is. And uh, I think I'm going to end it here and open the phone line and allow you to call in and ask any question that you can ask. Now, your question has to be constructive. Uh, you don't have to be rude. You can ask a question without being rude, and I can assure you I will answer your question. So please, the phone number you want to call is 832-672-5433. Eight three two six seven two two seven five nine. That is the number you want to call. And again, when you call, make your question brief. Make your question brief, so we can take as many questions as possible. Thank you. So I am expecting if you got a question. You got a question, you can go ahead and make your call. I would take uh, I would take uh, this question from uh, Mark Barretta who is on the phone on the line. Hello, sir. Hello, Mark. Yes, Mike, I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Yes, yes. Um, the question, this is the uh, CEO of Barreta uh, News. Thank you, sir. Thanks for calling. Yes, uh, I, have been, uh, I have been listening to all what you, you, you say. I've listened also to uh, Derek, who is the CEO of, uh, of, uh, of SBC. And uh, there are a lot of contracting uh, views. My question, uh, my question goes to something there are, there are two. One, can you again, before God and man, reiterate to the people of Southern Cameroon that the Ukrainian government has no idea who owns the SCPC? Because this is very important. With, with, with us, with the way we relate with SBC and with the things that we take going forward. We want to know if, before God and man, the Greek government has no idea who owns SBC and if they have not seen the original contract between SBC and the satellite uh, uh, company. That's the first question. Uh, the second question that I want to ask is uh, if the interim government has gone ahead already with the creation of ABC, the Amazonian Broadcasting Corporation, because the least, the least audio that came out from you clearly says that by August, by August, by August, August that will be ready. Can you also tell us that uh, that TV station is ready? And if it is ready, where the phones come from? All right, thank you. Let me take the let me take the question. All 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, I take it uh, offline. Uh, I hope you all got the question from Mark Barretta. Is it really true that uh, the IG has not seen uh, uh, the contract of SCBC and uh, where are the funds to create uh, ABC coming from? Are they coming from my trip to Boya phone? I want to say it again, Mark, your first question. Uh, again, very, very categorically clear. Not me, neither the president, nor yours truly or myself, who has supervising authority over SCBC, have seen SCBC contract. The chairman of the board, if he's listening to me, knows three days ago, the chief of staff in the presidency sent him a letter requesting the original I mean, re requesting the contract, forget about the original, requesting the contract. The only thing that we have seen, I have seen, the president has seen, are uh, the original invoices. And it took them shutting down SCBC for us to even see that invoice. That's how bad it has been. And that was the same problem they had with SCAPAC. They would not release original invoices to SCAPAC, and SCAPAC said, we will not pay the bills. That has been the same problem here. Now, going to S to ABC, one thing that I want to say to Ambazunians, I want you to take this uh, notice very, very clearly. SCBC is basically a piece of that contract, a piece of that original contract. If it were owned, by the people of Ambazonia. It is only that name in that piece of contract. The equipment that is used for broadcasting does not belong to the IG. It was never bought, it is rented. And so what we have there with this guy is a piece of paper called the contract. I'm saying this to say that when we say we are walking away from it, if we will, it is not like we are losing some huge sums of money in equipment. We have nothing in, in terms of equipment with SCBC. The equipment we rented is paid monthly in the bills of SCBC. And ABC, no dime coming from my trip to Boya funds will be used for ABC. A volunteer came up to give us equipment. And what we need to do is basically, if we're paying bees for SCBC, we'll just transfer those funds and pay the same bees for ABC with donated equipment. I hope this makes this very, very clear. That we're not budgeting some $30,000, some $20,000, some $50,000 to go set up another TV station. No, that is not happening. The equipment is being donated. It is there, it is available as I speak, and that's what you heard me say, by August, that can come up, because it just means, it just takes setting that equipment there, and we are not buying them. We are not paying for them. They are being donated for a short while, probably to the end of the revolution. And what all we need to do is pay the same bills for ABC as we pay for SCBC. Thank you for that question, please. Uh, I will take this other one. Hello, sir. You are. Uh, you have a question, please. Oh, good afternoon. I'm calling from uh, from San Marino in near Italy. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm Stephen. I'm Stephen, Mr. Cristiano. You, you are so admirable uh, with a very. Uh, wonderful tone so uh, we appreciate you in your function thank you but i will i will i'm so much concerned about the the ground action now we you you told us that we are uh, there's a group the scopers are building up a block of military to send down to stop our revolution correct and at the present moment you as a leader who had fought so hard and as a pastor, how do you, how can you support this with the division, which is among you people as a leader, to you? How can you, as a pastor, please, not even able and circle to call other front leaders that look at the those 
at a girl yesterday. Look at just kill an old man. Look at they just kill a baby. But you people have no heart to even look at the struggle of the people on Ground Zero to organize here and support our boys and girls and our mothers and old people on the ground. Now stop is going to change. All right, all right. Uh, uh, hold on. I will answer your question. Let me answer your question, please. Let me answer uh, your, your, your question. I think uh, you got the premise completely, uh, completely wrong. Uh, it is one thing. You have to realize that there are other groups on ground zero who are fighting the same cause like uh, the IG or the S or Resolution Forces are doing. And this IG is supporting them with all that it can. And remember, we haven't started this war yet, sir. I would like you to watch, to sit and watch and see what comes up in the few in a few days uh we have a handle on this revolution and we will not appreciate people coming up not to build but to sabotage that has stood out very very clearly from everything that this little clique of people uh in south africa have done we know what is good for the revolution and we will embrace it, we will support it, we will work with it, we will collaborate with it. But what we know, we destroy the revolution, we will do everything to protect the suffering of the people in this revolution, the people who are dying. We will do everything to protect their interests. The moment we realize that, a group is out there doing something different from what others are doing. That applies to the group that you are referring to in South Africa. Thank you. Uh, any other question, please?